So, oh, thank you for being at my talk. It's a 10 minutes talk, so I'm going to be uh, rushing through it a little bit. Um, I've uh, selected the parts from a longer talk that I think would be of interest to Python developers like we all are over here, which is basically what tools can we use when we get sucked into teaching kids, uh, either your neighbor's kid or kids at school or your own kids that actually want to learn more, that they actually want to get started with code. <clears throat> so I work, I am actually the CTO now of a small American company called Dexter Industries and we develop robots for the classroom. In the classroom, you usually have teachers that may not be uh, that technical and you have kids of all technical levels at the same time. So the robots that we develop uh, uh, allow the teacher to handle different level of kids. So, so from zero code to Python code. And the <coughs> robot that I have with me today is uh, Microbit based. Microbit is a little microcontroller that was developed in the UK specifically for teaching kids. And it works really well. It has uh, research done on it that 70% of the kids who played, started learning with the microbit have decided that coding is a potential career for them. Of course, they're eight years old. They're going to change careers 20 times before they actually get to choose. But you get 70% who say, well, yeah, I can see myself doing that. Right? So the microbit is a good starting point. So if you, get, if you have to teach kids, look at the micro bit as a good option. Um, I have a tiny little one here. That's what it looks like. Right? You can add hardware to it. So you can add like motors, LEDs, you can build stuff, and you can do robotics. So we sell this robot pre-assembled <coughs> to be used in the classroom. And I'm really, really short, so you don't see me anymore. But I'm here. So <laughs> when you teach kids that, that are really starting, they have zero knowledge of coding, make it one challenge at a time. And make sure this challenge is achievable. And make sure it is fun. Robots going around is a fun thing. <clears throat> the first thing that you have to deal with, first of all, kids nowadays, a lot of them have never seen a keyboard. They've been handed. Uh, tablets, cell phones, they don't have keyboard, they have zero keyboarding skills. I'm talking kids from six years old to maybe even 14 years old. You know, depending on which schools they go to and which uh, neighborhood they grow up in. So <clears throat> remove the keyboard from the equation and let's work on computational thinking. Computational thinking, I'm going really quickly over this, there's five steps. You have to learn how to decompose tasks, basically create functions. Uh, identifying patterns, this is what we do stuff we don't even think about anymore. Then you have logic, eventually you get to algorithms and they have to learn debugging. The tools that we promote is done by Microsoft. It's free, it's called Make Code, and it's drag and drop uh, programming that you can do with hardware. The one I have here is for the micro bit, but it does exist for other hardware, like Adafruit that we saw this morning. Uh, it exists for Lego Mindstorm. So you're, there's a lot of uh, solutions that can use the, uh, the make code. 10 minutes is too short for me to actually do demos. So I'm just going to go quickly over the blocks. Um, but so you can control, uh, one of the nice things about the microbit, by the way, is you have a microbit simulator. So you don't even need the hardware to get started. And you can, no, not this one I'm going to take. You can have your microbit show pre-made icons on start. And you will see it over here when it gets ready. Boom, there's my heart right there. And if I drop another one, I will have a very small animation. Let it refresh. That's why I'm not doing that many demos. Why is it not? Be oh, silly me. There's a difference between on start and a forever loop.
There you go, beating heart. <coughs> okay. Eight, six year olds can do that and they can understand that. Okay. Now, <coughs> what you want to move them to eventually Python because we love Python, right? Over here, this is what we want to be. If we're going to be you know, suckered into teaching kids, we might as well do it in a language that we like, um, <coughs> which is not block based programming. So, here, I'm going to show JavaScript for a little bit. But the way I present it to kids is I'm trying to get them to understand that if they do get to typed programming instead of blocks, it's more powerful. So even though the block didn't allow to me to make that change, if I put in a comma in here, I get a pop-up. And look at that. There's a hidden variable. The default is 600, so I'm going to bring it down to 200. 200, and now the heart is going to be faster, kind of like mine right now. <laughs> so you just tease the kids into understanding that typed programming is more powerful. <laughs> <coughs> Once they get that, they still don't have keyboarding skills. Honestly, I have to teach the kids where the colon is because they don't even use semicolon yet. They've never had the need for a colon. Don't even try curly brackets. They have no idea where the curly bracket is on the keyboard. Okay? So this project here called EduBlocks is written by a, it was started by a 12 years old in the UK. He's actually 14 right now. And we work together on this version of EduBlocks. His name is Josh. And uh, he's like really advanced in coding. But his classmates are not. So for, to go into Python, he developed this block-based Python. And <clears throat> you can actually like, load up libraries that you want over there. And then you can use from microbit import star. You, know, you want to do a for loop? You get here, you scroll down. There's my while colon is included. I don't need to deal with it. But you start, the kids are learning Python. They're just not typing it. You know? But then you have this wise kid in your classroom, because we always do. Um, right at the top, there's a write your own code block. So you can go in here and type in, well, I could do import pandas. Of course, the micro bit is not able to load pandas, but you get the idea. Okay? Now you know, you're ready to push your kids a little further. Here we are in whoa, block modes, and I just switched to Python mode. That's my generated Python code. This is editable. This is a full Python editor over here that I can type in and do something. So if they, once they're ready, that they have the bulk of the program and they start feeling that the blocks are slowing them down, they can move to the Python version and start typing there. Maybe they'll need to type just one sentence or one line of code, but not sentences. Um, so they're, they're, they're OK with that. And when they have a bigger chunk, they'll use the blocks. Okay? But they're slowly moving to that one. And once they're really ready, they move on to the Mu Editor. Mu Editor has been developed by Nicholas Tolervy. Not sure about the pronunciation of his last name. And it is made, like, it, the, the goal of the Mu Editor is to be a beginner friendly Python editor. So nothing fancy with it, but you can flash your micro bit here, and you have access to our Ripple. I don't know if my micro bit is connected to it. Probably not right now, because it's a demo, of course. And you have access to a plotter that they've showcased this, uh, this morning or earlier. Uh, with the micro bit, there is no debugging tools in that one. But if you go in Python 3, there's a debugging tool. And kids just love seeing robots moving around. So I have a little remote control from one micro bit to the other so that the kids can play around with it. 
basically out of the box. So that was my presentation on the current tools on how to teach kids to code in Python. Thank you. <laughs>